Miss Delight <laughs> was not always alone. This is her tragic love story. Once upon a time, in the heart of a bustling city, nestled within its labyrinthine streets, there stood a vibrant daycare center. Within its walls, laughter echoed and the pitter-patter of tiny feet danced through colorful corridors. At the center of this joyous chaos was Carmen, a preschool teacher whose warmth and kindness were as bright as the sun. With shimmering golden hair adorned with a crimson bow tie, Carmen was a beacon of love and care for the children under her wing. She had a penchant for adventure, often whisking her young charges away on expeditions to discover the wonders of nature. It was on one such adventure that Carmen first encountered Theodore. He was the newest addition to the daycare staff, assigned to teach sports to the energetic toddlers. Though initially reserved, Theodore's gentle nature quickly endeared him to both the children and his fellow teachers. As Carmen and Theodore worked together, their friendship blossomed. Carmen admired Theodore's patience and dedication to his work, while Theodore found solace in Carmen's kindness and compassion. As weeks turned into months, Carmen found herself drawn to Theodore in ways she couldn't quite understand. His soft-spoken demeanor and genuine care for the children captured her heart. And she soon found herself harboring feelings she had never felt before. Carmen had always been focused on her career as a preschool teacher. With a heart full of passion for nurturing young minds and a schedule brimming with lesson plans and activities, she hardly had time for anything else. But beneath her confident exterior lay a shy and hesitant soul, one that longed for companionship but struggled to take the first step. As she watched Theodore interact with the children, a warmth blossomed within her chest, a feeling she hadn't experienced in a long time. She admired his patience and kindness, his ability to connect with the little ones in a way that seemed almost magical. And as they worked together day after day, that admiration slowly began to turn into something more. One sunny afternoon, Theodore finally gathered the courage to ask Carmen out on a date. Blushing furiously, Carmen agreed, her heart a flutter with excitement. She spent hours preparing for their evening together, selecting the perfect outfit and imagining the adventures they would share. Little did Carmen know what fate has in store for her. When Theodore arrived to pick her up, Carmen's heart skipped a beat at the sight of him. He looked handsome in his casual attire, a shy smile playing on his lips as he greeted her at the door. Their date began at a quaint restaurant where they shared stories and laughter over plates of delicious food. Theodore was the perfect gentleman, attentive and charming, and Carmen found herself falling even more deeply under his spell. After dinner, Theodore suggested they take a stroll through the city, and Carmen eagerly agreed. But as they wandered through familiar streets, Carmen couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. It wasn't until they arrived back at the daycare center that Carmen's unease turned to fear. Confused, she questioned Theodore, but he merely smiled cryptically and led her to the preschool garden, promising a surprise. As they reached the garden, Carmen's heart pounded in her chest, her instincts screaming at her to flee. But before she could react, a shadowy figure emerged from the darkness, reaching out to her with a sinister hand. 
With a gasp of horror, Carmen felt herself being pulled into the shadows, her vision swimming as darkness enveloped her. When she finally regained consciousness, she found herself bound to a chair, her wrists and ankles tightly secured. Before her stood Theodore, his once gentle eyes now gleaming with malice. He revealed his true intentions, confessing that he had been plotting against her all along, a pawn in a twisted game, orchestrated by his mysterious master, the Protoman. Carmen's heart shattered as she realized the depth of Theodore's betrayal. She pleaded with him to release her, tears streaming down her face as she begged for mercy. But Theodore's heart was cold and unforgiving, his laughter echoing through the empty classroom. With trembling hands, Theodore began to mix a potion, its noxious fumes filling the air with a sickly sweet scent. As Theodore meticulously mixed the potion, his hands trembling with excitement, and a touch of trepidation, he reached for a dull yellow crescent moon charm resting on the table beside him. With a sense of solemn reverence, he fastened the charm around his neck, feeling its weight settle against his chest like a leaden burden. This simple act marked Theodore's unwavering submission to his malevolent master, the prototype. His voice quivered with a mixture of fear and devotion, sealing his fate and that of his unsuspecting victim, Carmen, in a dark pact from which there would be no turning back. His once gentle features contorted into a sinister grin, his eyes ablaze with an unholy fervor. With each ingredient he added, he chanted strange words in a guttural language, invoking the name of his dark master, the prototype. The air crackled with an eerie energy as Theodore's voice rose in a twisted hymn, his words dripping with reverence and madness. It was as if he was communing with forces beyond human comprehension, calling upon powers that should have remained dormant. And as the crimson liquid bubbled and hissed in the cauldron before him, Theodore's laughter echoed through the empty classroom, a chilling testament to the depths of his depravity. As the crimson gas swirled around them, Carmen felt her body twisting and contorting, pain coursing through her veins as her very essence was consumed by darkness. And in the chaos that followed, as Theodore's laughter echoed through the halls, and though Theodore thought Carmen was an easy prey, Fate had something different in store for him. His victory tasted bitter on his tongue. Carmen was nowhere to be found. Theodore's plans failed. He screamed in frustration and promised that he will catch her, even if it was the last thing he does. But for Carmen, this was only the first step towards revenge. 